Welcome to lecture 5, section 1.3 on some properties of composite mappings. This is Dr. Gilbert Iyabi. We are using the text Elements of Modern Algebra, the 8th edition by Gilbert and Gilbert. 1.3.1. Let's start off with some introduction. Let F be a mapping from A to B and G a mapping from B to C. Suppose A equals B equals C. Then we can observe that F composed with G and G composed with F are both defined. Some obvious questions would arise. Question number one. If F composed with G and G composed with F are defined and they have the same domain and co-domains, can we conclude that G composed with F equals F composed with G? In other words, is mapping composition commutative? So that is the first question we will try to answer in this lecture. The second question we may want to answer in this lecture is this, and this is for arbitrary sets A, B, C, not necessarily equal. So if F is a mapping from A to B and say G is a mapping from B to C, or whatever the definition may be such that F composed with G and G composed with F are defined, the question is, which properties of F and G carry over to the composition F composed with G or G composed with F? For example, if F is onto and G is onto, does that mean F composed with G is onto or G composed with F is onto? If F is onto and G is not, what do we say about G composed with F and so on and so forth? Question number three, if F composed with G or G composed with F is one-to-one -one or onto, what can we conclude about the properties of F or G? So these three questions are the questions we would attempt to address in this lecture. Let us start with the first question. Is mapping composition commutative? Define F to be a mapping from the set of integers to the set of integers and G the same from the set of integers to the set of integers by F of n equals 2n and G of n equals n over 2 if n is even and 4 if n is odd. We would attempt to construct F composed with G and G composed with F and see if both mappings are the same. Just an example. Okay, let us start with G composed with F. For every N in Z, G composed with F of N equals G of F of N by definition of composition. Now, f of n is 2n, so that equals g of 2n, and by the definition of g, that will be equal to 2n divided by 2, which is n. So we can conclude that g composed with f of n equals n for every integer n. So we have successfully constructed the composition G composed with F. Now let's attempt to construct F composed with G and then see if both would be the same. Two, we start with part A. If N is even, then F composed with G of N equals F of G of N by definition of composition but since n is even, g of n is n divided by 2, so that equals f of n over 2, and that equals 2 times n over 2 by the definition of f, and that equals n. 
and that is just for the case when n is even. What if n is odd? If n is odd, then f composed with g of n is f of g of n by definition of composition. But since n is odd, g of n is 4. So that equals f of 4, and which equals 2 times 4 by definition of f, and that equals 8. So if we put a and b together, we find that f composed with g of n equals n if n is even and 8 if n is odd. Whereas g composed with f of n is n for every n in z. What does that mean? So we conclude that g composed with f in this particular case is not the same as f composed with g. And we can say in general that mapping composition is not commutative. Here is a little example for you to play with. Define f and g to be mappings from z to z. z is a set of integers defined as follows for every n in z. f of n is n plus 2 if n is even, 2n plus 1 if n is odd g of n is 2n if n is even, and n plus 1 over 2 if n is odd. The question is, find the composition g composed with f, f composed with g, and then verify if g composed with f equals f composed with g in this particular example. We would leave this example as a simple exercise for serious students. So go ahead and start playing with this. I would require that all the students taking this class with me attempt this problem and show me their solutions in class. Let us now proceed to address question number two for our lecture today. Which properties of f and g carry over to the composition f composed with g or g composed with f? Let's start off with 1.3.3. Theorem. Let g be a mapping from a to b and f a mapping from b to c then of course we can see that f composed with g is going to be defined. Now the theorem says if f and g are both onto, then f composed with g is onto. Interesting. g is a mapping from a to b, f is a mapping from b to c, which means f composed with g is defined. So if G is onto, F is onto, the theorem says F composed with G is also onto. Proof. Now, as usual, I'm going to go very systematically with the proof. And I expect you to follow the same format when you're writing your proofs. Suppose F and G are onto. We must show that F composed with G, which is a mapping from A to C, is onto. What does that mean? What do we want to show? We pick an element at random. Let C be in C. We find A in A such that C equals F composed with G of A. That is what we mean by F composed with G is onto. I pick an element at random from C. I find an element in A such that C equals F composed with G of A. Now let's proceed and verify if that is the case. Now, we did pick an element C in C. So C, an element of C, and f, which is a mapping from b to c, 
unto, we are told that F and G are unto. If C is in C and F from B to C is unto, then what that means is there exists an element B in B such that C equals F of B. That happens because F is unto. F unto means for every element C in C, there exists a B in B such that C equals F of B. There is already a particular C in C. So, unto means I can find a B in B such that C equals F of B. Call that equation 1. Wait a minute. Did we just say we found a B in B such that C equals F of B? Yes, that is what we said. We said there exists a B. But don't forget, if B is an element in B and G from A to B is onto, what does that mean? It means there exists an element A in A such that B equals G of A. Remember, what does it mean for G to be onto? It means for every element B in B, there exists an element A in A such that B equals G of A. So call that equation 2. Look at equation 1. Look at equation 2. We have B and we have B. So we are in business. Substitute equation 2 in equation 1. We have C equals F of B. That is equation 1. And then substitute equation 2 into equation 1. That would be F of G of A, which equals F of G of A by definition of composition. So effectively, what have we done? We picked an element C in C. We have found an element A in A such that C equals F composed with G of A, i.e. what we are saying in general is that for every C in C, I can always find an A in A, and that is true because C was arbitrary, such that C equals F of G of A. But what that simply means in the language we are using is that F composed with G is onto, end of proof. So if G is onto and F is onto, then F composed with G is onto. Continuing with question number two for this lecture, which properties of F and G carry over to the composition F composed with G or G composed with F? Theorem 1.3.4 says if G is a mapping from A to B and B is a mapping from B to C, if F and G are both one to one, then F composed with G is one to one. Now, proof. Suppose F and G are both one-to-one, -one, we must show that F composed with G, which is a mapping from A to C, is one-to-one. -one. The domain of our mapping F composed with G is A. How do I verify that a mapping is one-to-one? -one? So I pick two elements at random from A. Let A1, A2 be elements in A such that the composition F composed with G of A1 equals F composed with G of A2. Our goal is to show that A1 must be equal to A2. Let's go ahead and fulfill the goal. But F composed with G of A1 equals F composed with G of A2 implies by the definition of composition F of G of A1 equals F of G of A2.
Now observe that g of a1 and g of a2 are images in B. These are elements in B and F feeds, in quotes, on the set B, i.e. the domain of F is B. So since F is 1 to 1, G of A1, G of A2 are in the domain of F, G of A1 equals G of A2. Remember the definition of 1 to 1. Whenever f of x equals f of y, x equals y. So I have f of g of a1 equals f of g of a2. f is 1 to 1. So that means g of a1 equals g of a2. Very good. But a1, a2 are elements of a, and the domain of g is a, and g is 1 to 1. So what does that say about g of a1 being equal to g of a2? It means that a1 equals a2. So effectively, what have we shown? We have thus effectively shown that for every two elements, a1, a2 in a, whenever the composition f composed with g of a1 equals f composed with g of a2, we must have that a1 equals a2. And by the language of abstract algebra, that means f composed with g is 1 to 1, and we're done. Easy, beautiful. Now, turning over to the third question in this lecture, which properties of the composition mappings would apply to the individual mappings. Let G be a mapping from A to B, and F a mapping from B to C. Problem number one, proof or disproof. If F composed with G is onto, then F is onto. Problem number two, problem number two, Prove or disprove. F composed with G one to one implies G is one to one. I will leave the proofs of these two beautiful problems, or let me say the proofs of our third question in this lecture as simple exercises for serious students. And we will solve some of this in class for those of you who are taking the class with me right now. Thank you very much. This brings us to the end of our short lecture on properties of composite mapping section 1.3 from the text Elements of Modern Algebra. Thank you and God bless you.